The cop liking the unspoken policy between cops to not report each other to the concept of omerta or wall of silence. But Serpico couldn't keep quiet. He confided in David Dirk, a graduate of Amherst College who had become an officer in 1963 after quitting law school. Both men resolved to take their information to the New York Times. It was only after their story made the front page that City Hall launched an investigation on NYPD. At a public hearing in the mid-70s, Frank Serpico testified as to what he had witnessed in the NYPD in conjunction with evidence the officials had found in the investigation. The atmosphere, the atmosphere here, I mean, the, the, the atmosphere does not yet exist in which most honest police officers can act without fear of ridicule or reprisal from fellow officers, Serpico stated. He and Dirk also pressured Mayor John Lindsay to form the Knapp Commission, which would focus on sniffing out further corruption in the force. To some, this hearing and the commission to investigate corruption, which came with it, made a world of difference. But to Serpico, real change in the NPD remains to be seen. I hear from police officers all the time. They contact me still, Serpico said. An honest cop still can't find a place to go and complain without fear of recrimination. The blue wall will and always will be there because the system supports it. Y'all hear that? The blue wall will always be there because the system supports it. Serpico made several enemies that day. He testified and unknowingly endangered his own life. <laughs> Ten months later, uh, he had been transferred to the Narcotics Division of the New York City Police Department. He was brought along on the arrest of a drug dealer in a Latino neighborhood of the Brooklyn because he spoke Spanish. And he was accompanied by a few backup officers. Serpico was instructed to just get the apartment door open and leave the rest to his colleagues. But when the door was open and Serpico rushed it, it was slammed shut on his shoulder and his head, wedging him halfway inside. Serpico called to his two backup officers, but guess what, y'all? No one came to help. He realized then that he was looking down at the barrel of a gun, and he was then shot in the face. Now check this out. Both of his backup officers fled after he was shot, and it would be an elderly Hispanic man who called 911 on his behalf. A single patrol car responded to the incident, and the officer who responded allegedly muttered, if I knew it was Serpico, I would have left him there to bleed to death. Serpico barely survived. Today, he still does not know the full story behind the shooting as an investigation was never concluded. He had read that officers who break the unspoken code of silence among police may sometimes not be helped in emergency situations, which I know to be true because I can tell you the police chief of Milwaukee, who's not here anymore, he's in Atlanta, uh, uh, Chief Arthur Jones, who grew up here, 
um, told us a lot of stories about uh, him being um, one of the early officers in Milwaukee and how they made him walk the beat by himself in snowstorms, how they just literally mistreated him and there was really no recourse. Um, pretty much uh, because there's a culture with this with this group that started back um, centuries ago. Well, hundreds of years ago, may I add. Anyway, um, he said that, um, uh, you know, he learned firsthand that day what happens when you break that blue wall of silence. In 1971, though, he was awarded the Medal of Honor, the New York Police Department's highest award for bravery in action. Serpico doesn't believe this recognition came from a genuine place, however. He says, they handed me a medal like an afterthought, like me tossing a pack of cigarettes. After all this time, I've never been given a proper certificate with, with my medal. About a year later, Frank Serpico had retired from the force. To this day, he has sharp shrapnel in his head and is deaf in one ear. Even 30 to 40 years later, cops still hate Serpico. When Durbin died in 2012, Serpico's friends pointed to the police website that regretted Serpico had not yet joined his buddy in death. His fearless and idealism and idealism were mentioned in the Hollywood sensational movie Serpico. I want y'all to get a chance to check that out if you do. I love Al Pacino, um, pretty good actor, and um, who am that's he speaks for itself and his longevity of his career. So he did he did the movie real good justice. Um anyway, the sensation of Serpico, which highlighted the constant frustrations and tensions the officer faced while he was on the NYPD. The movie does well in capturing Serpico's range with the incompetence and the corruption on the police force which still goes on to this day. Although the movie takes some liberties as Serpico spent most of his time in Brooklyn and not throughout all New York's boroughs as the film suggests. Serpico, who was a consultant on the film, was um, appreciative of Pacino's acting chops but butted heads with director Sidney Lumet. The real-life Serpico argued consistently with Lumet over the accuracy of the movie and eventually walked away from partaking in the movie altogether, it should be noted. The officer retired in 1972 and traveled the world. Criminal justice experts called Serpico a true reformer who helped effect real change in law. But the ex-cop is less positive about his legacy. In, in 2010, he confided to the New York Times a poignant regret about joining the career he idolized from childhood. They took the job I loved the most. From a kid on, I just wanted to be a cop. And they took it away from me. In 2011, he told the NYC, WNYC, Am I disappointed? Am I angry? I wouldn't say that I'm angry, but I have the right to be angry. I have the right to be disappointed because it took it from me. Frank Serpico um, at that time lived in upstate New York in a secluded cabin with not a neighbor in sight. But he ventures into the city for protests and causes he believes in it because he's ever, ever the whistleblower. So, when a lot of y'all start saying that what happens and why don't the good cops do something, they do, they try. But now that you know that that's, that's the culture, focus more on the culture and not the individual office.
That's imperative. That system got to come down. It's got to come down. Has to be defunded. Because if they'll do that to their to him, you already know what they'll do to us. Okay, because we bear witness every day. All right. So with that being said, I hope you like what you heard. Um, if you like, please subscribe and share this video. Um, I want to thank y'all all for being out there. I want to give a shout out to Yanni Clemens, to um, Love, Peace, um, and um, let's see, everybody out there. Uh, I'm trying to think of people I can think off the top of my head. Um, Mr. Lou, uh, thank y'all for being out there. Uh, I'm going to try to do some more videos today. Hopefully, video, uh, YouTube won't snatch them down. So, I, if, if so, I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye, y'all. Uh, hey, leave your comments below. If you heard about Serp Serpico, if you remember, um, have you seen the movie? If you have, what you think about it? Um, and I'll see you in the next one.